Hi, this is Jan from Let's Build Shopify and welcome back to the second part of my free shipping bar tutorial where we will have a look at the advanced implementation so that the value for someone to qualify for free shipping gets updated whenever someone adds an item to the cart without the page having to refresh and the same thing should work on the cart page if someone adjusts the quantity. So you can see the message gets updated and it should be fun to implement this, so let's go. Alright, so starting this video, I assume that you have already seen part one of this tutorial. And just to quickly recap that, by now you should have this modified announcement bar and you can display the amount that someone needs to add in order to unlock free shipping. But when you add an item to the cart, this value won't get updated automatically and you need to refresh the page so that it gets updated. And if you haven't seen part one yet, I highly recommend you go back and watch that first so you can get a really good understanding of what is going on. But otherwise, if you're using the debut theme, you could also go ahead and copy and paste the content of our modified header.liquid file and you will find that attached to the video description. Okay, so that being said, I can already tell you that in this video, we are going to write some JavaScript code to implement our update functionality. And therefore, I want to give you a quick overview on how the JavaScript is structured within the debut theme. And you will find the same pattern in many other themes as well. And I can simply right click with my Chrome browser and then go to inspect and switch to the console. And in here, we can test and debug JavaScript code. But what I want to show you right now is that our theme files attach to an object that is called theme to the window. And in that theme object, we will find all the theme elements that have to be managed in some way by JavaScript. And just to name a few examples, here we have the mobile navigation or maybe the search drawer or some videos if we have videos on our page. And all these elements contain methods that help to control them. So for example, we could use the theme.search drawer and in here we will find a method that is called open and this would simply bring up the search bar. And in the same way, we have a method that is called close, and this would dismiss the search bar. And in the same way, we are going to create a helper function to update our shipping bar, and then we will simply call that every time an input changes. Okay, so now we can have a look into the actual theme code. And in your theme files, you will find a folder called assets, and this should contain the theme.js, which should contain most of the JavaScript for your theme. And you can already see the window.theme object, which I just showed you on the front end. And here it is set to a blank object. And then over time, you will see that all the other elements are added to this object. So we have theme.currency, the drawer, the header, the mobile navigation, um, the video, and so on and so forth. And within these elements, we have all the helper functions that we can use to control the elements. So for example, here we have a method called pause video, and here we have one that is called load videos. And now we are going to scroll to the bottom, and down there we will implement our own shipping bar element with all the necessary update functions. So let me zoom in that it's easier for you to read. And down here we drop to a new line, and first of all we create our new shipping bar element. So let's type theme.shippingbar and then we set it to an empty JavaScript object. And now we will drop in between these curly brackets and down here I can define the so-called object properties. And all the properties will be public on the front end. So maybe we could simply type test and then some text, hello world. And maybe another property called test2 which will be some random number, maybe one, two, three, four, five. Uh, but we can also add functions to these properties. So we will have an update function. And then we would simply type function, a pair of parentheses and a pair of curly brackets. And in here we can define what happens when someone executes the function. So let's do console.log. And for now we will simply type updated shipping bar and for now let's save this and after a quick refresh on the front end we should now have access to our new theme.shippingbar object and you can already see that we have our defined values so 
beam.shippingbar.test equals hello world and test2 is 12345. And we can even call our update method. Um, therefore, we just use parentheses. And you can see now it says updated shipping bar. And this is exactly where we will implement our real update functionality later. But for now, I just want to tell you that I have a small problem with these two values being public. Because later we will have some variables and I don't want them to be public. But with the syntax that I used, we don't have a way to create private or hidden properties. So we will fix that and then we will go ahead and implement the update um, method. So back in the theme file, we will now define this object in a slightly different way. So let's type theme.shippingbar. And now we won't set it to an object immediately, but instead to a function. And this function should be executed immediately. So we type parentheses at the end. And in between the curly brackets, we can define that function. And in here, we can now define all the variables that we need and our update method. And then all the variables will be private and we will only return or make the update method public. And now I feel like this may sound a little bit confusing, especially if you're new to JavaScript. So let's define some variables and then I will show you this in action. So we will have one variable for the shipping bar HTML. And then we will have one, let's say, for the promote message. So we can do promote txt. And then we will have another one for the message that shows up when you unlock free shipping. So unlocked txt. And down below, we can then define our update function. So let's do function that is called update. And we can also define that function right here. But for now, we will simply type console.log updated shipping bar. And now we can go ahead and delete all the above declaration. And in this function, we will simply return our new update function to the public. So let's type update will link to the update function. And then save this. So as we check the front end one more time, we should now see that within the theme.shipping bar element, we only have access to the update method and all the other variables are no longer public. And so this syntax helps to keep things structured and it's also used throughout the theme. So I thought it would be a good idea to share this. All right, so in order to build out our update function, we now need to assign some values to our variables. And the shipping bar itself is relatively easy to get, so we can simply use document.querySelector and then select it by its CSS class. So I think it was announcement bar, announcement dash bar. But in order to get the other two values, so the promote message and the unlocked message, and the threshold as well, we will need that too. Uh, there we will use a small trick to get these because we can't simply access the customizer settings from the JavaScript file. So therefore we will go back to the header.liquid where we implemented our free shipping bar. And then we will simply add these values to the data set of the announcement bar. So we will define three data attributes. The first one will be data-promote. Then we will have data-unlocked. And we will have data-threshold. And now we can simply copy these variables that we defined above and place them into the data attributes. But we also need to add curly brackets so the liquid gets rendered. And the unlock txt. And the threshold. And in the JavaScript, we can now get these data attributes and assign them to our variable. So back in the JavaScript file, we can now take the announcement bar and get all the values we need from its dataset. So bar.dataset.promote, then bar.dataset.unlocked, and bar 
dot data set threshold. We can save this. And now the time has come that we can implement our update function. And therefore we will use an AJAX request. So a request in the background, if you want to say. And therefore we type dollar sign dot get JSON and then the request domain, which will be slash card dot JS. So we want to request the card. And once we get that data, so then we want to perform a certain action with that data. So we can simply type function and then card and then curly brackets. And in here we will define what happens with the card data. But now let me show you really quick what we get when we call this request domain. And therefore I will copy this to my clipboard and then I can use my Shopify domain and append slash card.js. And you can see that I get the card data in the JSON format. And the JSON format is a way to display structured data. We can see it here in a more structured way. And you can see that I get information on the card like the item count, the items in the card, the subtotal, the total price. And this is the key attribute I'm interested in to compare if the threshold has been reached or not yet. And now back in the update function, I can simply calculate the value that is left by subtracting the card.total price from the threshold. So threshold minus card.total price. And in the same way as we did it in the header file, we now need to apply a money filter to this value left because right now it's in cents and doesn't match the theme money formatting. So let's do var value left money. And then we can use a function that lies within theme dot currency dot format money. And this function will take the value in cents and the theme dot money format. And then we can save it. And now the last thing we have to do in order to finish our update method is simply check if the value that is left is less or equal to zero. Then we want to display the unlocked message. And otherwise, so if it is still above the zero, then we want to display the promote message. And therefore we will simply access the announcement bar. So we will type bar.innerHTML in both cases. And now we can simply copy the message from the header file. So let's do this right away. And right here we have the announcement bar message. So we can simply copy it and then paste it right here. And now we have to use single quotes because otherwise we will get a conflict with these double quotes. And we also remove the curly brackets from the liquid rendering because now we can use the JavaScript variable that we defined above. And then we will use plus and plus. And here we use single quotes again. So this is the success message. And down below, we can copy the, the same statement or the same markup. And now we will replace the unlocked message with the promote message. But if you remember, we still have this dynamic placeholder from the customizer settings where we output the value that is left and we will replace that as well. So let's type dot replace and then value. Oh, it's in brackets value. And we will replace it with the value left money. And then we can save it. And I hope you can already see that this is very similar to what we have done in the first tutorial. So in the header file, we did basically the same. We took some of the messages from the customizer. And when we update or put out the announcement bar message, we simply check if the value that is left is less or equal to zero. 
And then we set the announcement message to either the success message or to the promote message. All right, so now we should give our new implemented method a test on the front end. And therefore I went to the card page and now I will adjust the quantity. And when I call our new method, so theme.shippingbar.update, we should see this value jump to 10 euro. And it does, so this is great. And now I will qualify for free shipping and I will call the same method again. And then we should see the unlocked message. And we do, so this works great and we didn't make any mistakes. Otherwise we would see them right here and we could fix them in the theme file. But now that this is working, we simply have to call this method whenever the card input or the card quantity changes. And I think right now you already have enough input. So the last thing is very simple to do and then we can finish the project. All right, so back at the theme files, we now have to find all the places where let's say an item is added to the card or the input quantity is changed or an item is removed entirely. And in the debut theme, you can search for exactly these keywords. So let's search for update item. And right here you will find a function that is called whenever the input quantity changes. And you can see that they also do an Ajax request to perform this on the background. And once this is done, they also do some other stuff. And right before they end here, we can call our new theme shipping bar update method. So let's copy it right here. And this is the first place we will add this. And then we will go ahead and search for add item to cart or add item. And you will see the second function that gets called whenever an item is added to the cart. And even here they do an Ajax request to perform this on the background. And again, once this is done, they execute a function. And right before they end this function, we can again insert our new theme.shippingbar update method and save it again. And the last place we will call our new function is when an item is removed, so on remove. And let's see, here we have the function for it. And there's the Ajax request to perform it on the background. And once this is done, they execute all this. And at the end, we will call our new shipping bar update method. So let's copy it here as well, in colon and save. And I think now we have all the important places. So let's check this on the, uh, on the front end. So back at the front end, I can now try to add an item to the card. And you would see that this gets updated immediately. And even on the card page, if I adjust the quantity, let's say to six, then this updates to the unlocked message, perfect. And even if I remove the item entirely, this jumps back to 50. So everything's working, perfect. Okay, so before we finish the video, I want to add one more little thing so that this gets a little bit safer to use because right now we don't have any validation if the shipping bar is enabled. And if it isn't enabled, this might throw an error and break a lot of theme code. So what I simply want to do is after we get the shipping bar or after we try to get the shipping bar, I want to test if the shipping bar has any useful value. So we can simply type if bar and then wrap this into curly brackets. And the same thing uh, will be done in the update method. So if we have a shipping bar, then we want to do everything that we just implemented. And otherwise we will simply do nothing. So we'll save this and this is the minimum validation that we can make. And then we can finally finish the video. And this was a lot to explain and probably a lot of input for you as well. So if you have questions, you can always leave them down in the comment section. And as always, I hope you found some value in this video and learned something new. And if you haven't already, you can subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future content. And then I hope to see you on the next video. Bye.